Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals publish to inform their consumers, to grow their practices, and to leave a legacy. We're doing a series of spotlights on remarkable attorneys with a focus on elder law and estate planning across the country. Joining me today on this segment is Richard Tizano. He's from Washington. Richard, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mark. Pleasure to be here. Richard, I know elder law and estate planning is a broad topic. Please tell us a little bit about your areas of focus and specifically the types of folks that you help. So I have been an estate planning attorney for uh, quite a while, and then my father ended up uh, needing long-term care. He uh, had to go into a nursing home, and I realized that I had no idea how that process worked and how my clients that I was meeting and helping them with estate planning day after day, uh, I wasn't giving them the opportunity to even think about what that process might be when they got to an age where that those kinds of things began to happen to them. So that that's what really helped me focus my estate planning practice to the area of dealing with the issues that uh, involve aging. I realize we're recording this uh, right in the midst of elder law month. And uh, we're really eager to bring more awareness to this topic. So what are some of the things that people may not be aware of? And what are the dangers of not having all your ducks in a row that you help them uh, get together? Well, what ends up happening if people do nothing is you end up crisis planning because the issues are going to come up. Um, I only half jokingly say uh, when you start life, you need somebody to hold you and feed you and love you and change your diaper. And uh, if you, we all live all, long enough, we all come back to the cycle of life where we need somebody to hold us and love us and feed us and change our diaper. And so uh, if, uh, if you're avoiding thinking about that, you're also would be avoiding dealing with it or planning for it. And uh, sooner or later, if we live long enough, those issues are gonna have to be addressed. Like a lot of the old school uh, I, thinking, I see- uh, a lot of times the people used to think that, oh, I've got a will. Isn't that enough? Where does the will, you know, that's like a popular misconception, isn't it? Where does the will like fit in this and what else do they need to have? So the will kicks in when, kicks in when you die, it takes care of the issues after your death, but probably most certainly most, most important for life is having documents to um, authorize folks to step in and assist you while you're alive. So that would be your powers of attorney. Uh, for financial issues or for medical issues. And then uh, in Washington, we call it a directive to physicians. In some states, it's called a living will. Uh, And it's a document that authorizes your attorneys, in fact, the persons you named or appointed in your power of attorney, it authorizes them to act on your behalf medically and to assert uh, your wishes at the critical time uh, at the end of your life. Are there any other really big myths or misconceptions that you hear out there that you kind of want to shed light on? Um, Well, I'll tell you, it's not a myth that you can't take it with you because you can't. Uh, You leave it behind. Uh, And I think it's important for um, people to realize that if you do do some planning, it can make a difference. Uh, And I just would encourage people to consider that. What, What can I do now? What should I do? Most people take more time uh, planning for uh, buying their refrigerator or certainly for a vacation than they do with um, their estate plan and what that might look like to benefit themselves or their family. So for people who realize they need to get something together, but they just don't even know where to start, what's the process look like and what are the steps you take them through to make sure they get all their ducks in a row? Well, Certainly, they could do some reading ahead of time. I'm, I'm really big on education. I, I have free seminars I do uh, online, and, and I have a book I wrote, and, and I think it helps people to, to find a place to start, but jump in somewhere, either trying to educate yourself or just making an appointment uh, to go talk to someone to begin the, the thought process. I find that people go through a typical cycle. You know, somebody's going to come to see me. Maybe they've done some research, maybe not, but we have an informational gathering time. They tell me about who they are, what their life is, what they think their needs are. And then I begin to have an explanation with them about what the options are, what I see the issues as they've explained them to me and what the um, options are in addressing those issues. And then um, applying 
those options to their particular situation. Uh, and that helps them to get an idea of what, uh, what options they, or what, what their choices can be. Because I find people are frozen with fear because they don't know what all the options are. And they're afraid they'll make the wrong choice, that they'll do something today and then find out, oh, next week, I, I could have done that for my loved one. Why didn't I do that? And so they're afraid to make the wrong decision. So education is important. So you know, have some confidence, these are my choices. And they may all be bad because you're losing the person you love but at least you have some confidence if you talk to a professional as, as to what those options are. This is, these are the options. Let me help you choose, choose that. And then finally, once all the cards are on this table, so to speak, I think it's important for me to try to give some inspiration to the people. Um, I, I always sign my book, God, uh, God Guides the Journey, because he really does. And so it's helpful if we, we, we are able to accept that. Uh, we're doing the best we can, we're making the most preparation we can, um, and ultimately we can have some hope uh, and encouragement uh, that things are, ultimately they're gonna be okay. And it takes courage for people to step out. You know, I see uh, people that they're ready there to acknowledge, okay, we need to move to the next phase of our life. And if they're willing maybe to sell the big house and downsize, or they're willing to move into assisted living, rather than waiting for the crisis to push them into that. Because the choices are so minimalized if you wait for the crisis. If you are able to have the courage to take the step forward, then you have many more options and opportunities. Richard, you mentioned a little bit in the beginning, but what inspired you to make elder law and estate planning like the, the focus of your practice? How'd you get started? Well, it, it started when I was 12 years old. My mom had a stroke and she was paralyzed and my dad and I cared for her uh, for the rest of her life, which she spent in a wheelchair. Um, and then I, I did go to law school. And like I said, I was practicing uh, estate planning. What really pushed me towards the elder court core uh, or elder law um, option was, again, seeing my dad go through that process of, of being beginning to come become unable to care for himself and then understanding what the options were. And that was about 25 years ago. And so we didn't have the gray tsunami back then and all the information wasn't available. And it was really difficult to figure out how does the system work? Uh, you know, the Medicare Medicaid process was instituted in 1965. And so that really gave birth to the nursing home industry. Uh, and you, you could build a nursing home and fill it with people. And when they couldn't pay anymore because their funds were gone, the government would pay. And so that option came in and it really revolutionized how we look as a country for caring for our seniors. And uh, in some sense, it's kind of sad, uh, but it's there. The option is there, the opportunity is there. There are, um, so there are Medicaid benefits, Medicare benefits, there's VA benefits, there's a whole ton of resources for people who uh, find themselves in need. And it's just so comforting for people when they can find out that there are options out there and there are ways to deal with these issues. For folks listening that are in Washington or in areas that you can serve, how can they find you, connect with you and learn more? Uh, well, I have a, a website, uh, accidentalsafari.com. That's the name of the, the book I wrote, Accidental Safari. And it's a guide for navigating the challenges that come with aging. Uh, Richard Tizano, you can find me on the web, T-I-Z-Z-A-N-O. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to help folks or to uh, speak to groups or um, do whatever I can. I think, edu like I said, education is important and it's a good place to start. Richard, it, it, May, every month, every year in May is Elder Law Month. And I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to share with my audience today. And I wish you continued success for you and for all of your clients. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. Richard Tizano from Washington. And this segment's been brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals publish to inform their consumers, to build their practices, and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for joining me.